What's up guys, it's Brad from Light Architect. In this video, I'm going to show how you can get better looking cinematic defocus and bokeh blur effects inside of Blender's compositor using customizable bokeh images and lens kernels to drive how the blurred part of your image looks. Have you ever noticed that on big budget movies with really good visual effects, the bokeh blur just looks much more detailed and realistic? A lot of the time the reason for that is because they are using custom bokeh images and these lens kernels to drive that effect. This is a really good way to add a lot more realism and character to your CG renders. Before we dive in, if you've been following our channel, you probably know that we're getting ready to launch a brand new visual effects app for filmmakers and visual effects artists called FX Soup. We're incredibly excited about it and would love your support. So if that sounds like something you'd be interested in, you can sign up for free to get launch updates at www.fxsoupapp.com. So without further ado, let's get started. Here we are inside of Blender's compositor, and this is going to be the final result that I'm going to set up here. I've been working on this project for about a half a day now, and it's just a little live action composite of a CG Godzilla-like monster walking through the city here. I have a little dust simulation going on here to create a little bit more debris. And one of the things I did for this render was add some embers kind of falling from the sky here. And that's what these out of focus particles are here. And I'll go ahead and show you guys in layout mode our different view layers. As you can see, I have a variety of them here and I will release a full video breaking down this whole project so stay tuned for that but what we're going to look at here is the defocus effect on the embers so these embers are just kind of falling from the sky here as you can see and I've just added a basic plane here and I've actually used the weather effects add-on snow effect here to add this particle system to the scene and then I've just made the instance particle have an emission material rather than a snow material so they're just kind of glowing particles falling from this plane here. And this is a really simple effect to create. I've used this preset, but all you have to do is add a very basic particle system and add some randomization to its movement so these particles just kind of fall down here. And those particles are just coming by just off camera and just falling into our scene. So I'm just rendering out these particles like so on their own separate view layer. And when I bring them into Blender's compositor, we get this data right here. So in this video, I'm going to show how we can add some custom defocus effects to these falling embers to get a much more cinematic look and add some character to them using lens kernels and bokeh images here. Again, I will go through the full composite here in a bit, but for now, we're just going to be focusing on adding the defocus effect over top of the rest of the composite. So essentially just all of these nodes right here is what we're going to create. Okay, so I will go ahead and just remove all of these effects off to the side here and we'll start from scratch. So as you can see here, we're just overlaying our embers view layer on top of our composite with this add node. So the first thing we're going to do to add some blur to these foreground embers here is just add our very basic bokeh blur node. So I'll just press shift A, we'll add filter blur bokeh blur. And you'll notice that you have a lot of different blurs to choose from, but this is going to be the one that you can use a custom kernel image to drive how that bokeh blur looks. So I'll show you guys what that means here in a second. So I'll just drag this in here. And as you can see here, right off the bat, you can see we have some some nice lurking blur on our embers. I'm gonna go ahead and just output this into a viewer by itself so we can kind of adjust it by itself here. So pretty basic bokeh blur here. You can change the size of the blur with this float value right here. So you can see if I increase that a lot, it's much bigger. I think probably around two is what we want. But you can see right now this bokeh blur is blurring our embers into these little squares. And using a lens kernel is going to allow you to adjust the shape and the detail in these blurred part of our embers here. So to change how this bokeh looks, we will press shift A and we'll add a input bokeh image. And as you can see here, now we have an image that we can plug in to the bokeh input of our bokeh blur node. And right off the bat, you can see that now we're using this hexagonal image to drive how our bokeh blur looks. And this is essentially what a lens kernel is. Blender has this bokeh image node, which is really useful for adjusting and creating more detailed bokeh. So as you can see here, we can increase the flaps on our bokeh image, which is the number of blades in our hypothetical camera iris diaphragm. So we'll change this to six, and now you can see we have six sides of bokeh here. You can also change the angle of our bokeh. So if we change this, you'll notice that our bokeh image rotates here. I'll go ahead and leave that at zero for now. We can also change the rounding here, so we can kind of feather these edges together. So if we increase this to one, it'll be a complete circle, as you can see there. But then if we do something like 0.5, for example, now now these edges are kind of feathered off a bit. 
I tend to prefer a little bit harder edge, so I'm just gonna keep it at zero. And these last two effects are where we can really add some character to our bokeh. And these are the kata diatropic setting and the lens shift setting. And I recommend just playing around with these, but according to the Blender 4.3 manual, the catadiatropic setting adjusts the level of distortion found in mirror lenses and some telescopes, and this can be useful to provide a visual complex bokeh. And then our lens shift effect introduces chromatic aberration into the blur, such as what would be caused by a tilt shift lens, and pretty much any lens in the real world has a little bit of this chromatic aberration as well. So you can see here, if we can play around with this, we can introduce some catadiatropicness you can see now we're getting this circle in the middle of our bokeh image, which again is driving the bokeh on our ember layer. So you can see we can increase this a lot and just really, you know, dial in some cool effects. Then we can increase the lens shift, introduce some chromatic aberration into our render. And you can see some of the green now that's showing up here. And now it's creating a lot more imperfection in our image, which I tend to like. I like to introduce a little bit of imperfection in my CG renders as it makes it a bit more realistic, but it just depends on what you're going for, obviously. I'm gonna dial back the lens shift a bit. And you can see kind of the preview of what these effects are doing. I think something like this is pretty cool. We won't do too much of the catadiatropic effect, but this is the general idea here, guys. This is how you can create much nicer looking bokeh on your image and then of course we can increase the size of our bokeh as well let's make this three and we'll do this in our bokeh blur node and yeah now we have some interesting looking bokeh maybe i'll make this four make it a little bit bigger i like that a little bit more and we'll bring back our lens shift and a little bit less of our catadiatropic effect We'll do something like this for the sake of this tutorial. But you can see we've introduced some imperfection in our blurred embers here. And that's exactly what these lens kernels are going to do. And the cool thing about this is you don't have to stop here with this bokeh image. You can actually line up some more nodes in between the bokeh image and where you input it into the bokeh blur to really customize how this image looks before you use it to drive your bokeh. Okay, so using the bokeh image to drive the bokeh in the bokeh blur node is one way to do this. But the cool thing about using this bokeh blur node is you can actually use pretty much any image to drive how your bokeh looks. So I just downloaded a couple of lens kernels off of the internet here, and I've created some of these myself too. But what we can do to kind of display another way to do this is we can just drag these into our compositing setup here, and then we can actually use this to drive our bokeh as well. And now, as you can see here, we're actually using a image from the real world to drive how our bokeh looks. So I'm gonna go ahead and just go back to our Godzilla-like render here so we can see the final shot. And you can see it's not very bright here in our scene. So one thing we might do, just for the sake of this tutorial, is add a little RGB curves here. Just increase the brightness of our embers layer. And then we'll also add a glare node right after our RGB curves to add a little bit of glare to our bokeh as well. Okay, so that's kind of softening them a bit. I might just bring down the size of our bokeh as well. So bring this to two. But you can see what's happening here. We're just using these images to drive how our defocus looks. And we can use any image we want. We'll try a couple of these here. Try this one next. This is a cool lens kernel. This one looks really good because it's as if the lens is kind of grungy. You can see from the detail on this image and this affects how our defocus looks. So this one might be my favorite so far. It's really uh, you know adding a lot of detail to those blurred embers and we're using just some very basic geometry to drive this particle system and then adding some defocus to it that has a little bit more detail on it. Let's try a couple more here. One that might be really cool is this one right here. We can try this one out. This one should be really cool because it's kind of faded on one side. Look at that. So you have kind of a brighter edge on one side. And I think this one looks really great. It's almost as if there's some light coming from off camera somewhere. And again, you can see exactly why this is happening. It's just this image is driving your blur. And maybe this is self-explanatory, guys. I knew this existed a long time ago, but I just didn't really try to do it in Blender that much. So I uh, thought I'd introduce it to you guys in case you haven't used this technique. Uh, we'll go ahead and just try a couple more here just for fun. Uh, this one's kind of like an anamorphic look. It's gonna stretch this one vertically. So this is kind of cool. This could be cool for some sparks or something. Now, obviously this is not distorting those embers as as if they're anamorphic, but it's just going to create the shape of this input for the blur on those pixels. So really cool effect, guys. We can literally just take a screenshot of our background, you know? We can use any image. We can literally take a screenshot of our background and drag our screenshot into our scene 
and we can take this screenshot here and plug this into the Boca node. And now our screenshot is driving our Boca. And that actually looks kind of cool. And we're literally using a square lens kernel of a screenshot of Blender. So, you know, I wouldn't recommend that, but it actually looks pretty cool. You're adding a lot more detail to your Boca. But anyways, guys, that is how you can use the Boca Blur node and Boca images and kernels to drive a more realistic looking Boca effect in your compositor. I hope this video was helpful. As always, feel free to leave a comment if you have any questions or suggestions in the comment section below. Let us know what you'd like to learn next on the channel. Subscribe for more visual effects and filming techniques, and I'll see you next time.